Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas, and today's episode is Surfboard and Fin Talk with Britt Merrick and Zeke Lau. I think you guys will love this. Sit back, get your favorite drink, enjoy the show. like a, a pivotal fin in a board yeah. that has a lot of rock? Well, because I think what I was finding on tour, it's like you're surfing so many different types of waves. Right. And if you have so many options of fins and different rockers of boards, like all those things kind of get confusing. So a lot of guys just pick like the most versatile, best all around fin. Right. So that the only thing you're worried about is, okay, am I riding a 6 or am I riding a 6 sure, sure. Yeah. And then this fin will go in and I can figure out how to do everything. Right, and messing with board length by two inches is a lot. It's it's a lot. It changes a yeah. lot for you guys. Yeah, for you know, sure. timing in the pocket and smaller wave, you want yeah, a little bit speed, more. speed, the push. Right. One of our goals with guys and girls on tour is to eliminate the variables. Because there's already so many things they have to think about right. that I don't want them to have to think about the boards or the fins right. any more than they have to. Right. The worst thing is when like you pedal out in the heat and you're like, I should have taken the other board. Yeah. Then awesome. you're like, you're done, you know what I mean? Or I should have put the other fins in. Fins in yeah. So fins is one way to eliminate variables. Right. So it's generally what we try to do is like, let's just get this set of fins, we're just gonna build boards around that, and we know we're always gonna ride this. Sure. Which, it's different for the recreational surfer. Right. The recreational surfer, I would say, have as many fins as you can, because they make huge changes. Right. And it's seldom that on this level that we want to make huge changes, we want to make incremental changes. Yeah. And I'd rather do that in the shaping room in the rocker right. or the plan shape than have to rely upon the fence. Right. But for a recreational surfer, it make it can make or break a board. Right. The fence. Absolutely. So I would say like build your fin quiver, you know what I mean? Right. Buy different boards and try them with different fins, like it's just a nice head. Absolutely. Uh, when you have a bigger board with longer ground line, your turn's naturally gonna be bigger. Right. But it takes you longer to bring that board around, so naturally you're doing the turn slower. Right. But when you have a smaller board on a bigger wave, that board's going way quicker. So if you're able to control that board in a in like a higher speed situation, right, then your turn is gonna look like it's accelerating through the turn sure. instead of like kind of just like pushing through the turn, if right. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Like you're flying through sections with speed, sure. and through the turn, like you're gaining more speed. Because the board's smaller, you can fit it in the most critical spot, and B, you do your full turn in the most critical part of the wave, right. which on the bigger board, you're not doing that. It's eventually gonna go out into a flat spot and slow down. Right. Somewhere though, <clears throat> there's a sweet spot in that, because if you get don't have enough rail line, it cuts your turn short. Yeah, right. Like Kelly at Haleva on that small board. Yeah. Like everyone was stoked to watch that. It was kind of cool, but he could not hold a long, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. If you watch him when he's in the past when he's ridden longer boards, all the turns are more drawn out. And I don't think he was sacrificing speed. There's like a fine line somewhere. Right. Yeah. When you're talking about a shorter board, how much shorter is it? Uh, it just depends. I mean, I want to stop. Like if I think of it this way, like, if I'm gonna go on the North Shore, like my, my biggest board to be a six six, okay. and everything falls under there. But you gotta, like you said, there's a half, there's a balance between like right. getting that drive and having a longer rail line and riding a shorter board in bigger waves, sure. and then the paddling. So it's a lot, but so when you take off in a couple inches in length, are you adding that to thickness? Because you don't want it wider, right? 
No, you don't want it wider. Um, it depends. It really depends on what what the spot's going to be, sure. like how much paddling is required. Right. You know, are you just trying to swing under the lip? Yeah. Or are you, you know, sunset versus pipe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? For sure. Two so different there's, waves. Yeah, there's a, like at sunset, volume is going to be your friend with all the work that you have to yeah. do paddling. Right. But pipe, it becomes a liability pretty quickly. Right. So you got to find like that lower limit. Right. So let's talk about the liability for a second, because I answer a lot of questions. Board has too much phone, I get stuck at the top. Uh -huh. So would that be the liability? Would you say at pipe, maybe if a board had too much foam, why well, would it not be your friend? In the most, in the critical spot, like in the barrel, pipe, okay. you're just only surfing in the barrel. And the barrel is this little spot with a lot of curve, and, and your board's got to be able to maneuver and like move within this curl. Right. So the volume, if there's too much, too much rail or too much like even in the middle of the board, it'll be catching and like not fitting pretty sure, much sure. in the most critical part of the wave. Right. But like as soon as you get that board out on the face, it's probably going to go really bad. Right. Because like if a board that has that much volume will come out on the face, it'll feel good. But if the board works in the pocket, you'll go out on the face and it'll kind of die out. It'll lose right. the speed because it needs to be in that critical spot to like work. Right, right. So like that's basically the thing between pipe and sunset where sunset you want a flat big board that's just going to project you out and hold the speed and right. have lots of drive get you in early but pipe is like the game now is you take off under the lip you slide in you do two pumps while you're in the barrel on the foam ball and then sure. you come out right. so you need a board that has curve and enough volume to kind of handle all the turbulence and drive and all everything you need to do but not so much volume that it slows the reaction time down yeah. right because at a point, especially at the level we're talking about, more volume slows down the reaction time. Right. Everything moves slower when you add more volume. I agree. So you see these guys in the barrel, and it's like they just snuck under the lip, and it's a couple really quick, so everything needs to be like immediate reaction time. Yeah. Mm. And that's also a function of volume. Interesting. Well, pipe, too, it's like everyone has this problem with pipe. Like to have a board, especially when it gets over eight foot, it's like, okay, now I need a paddle into a wave. I need to match the speed. This thing's coming in so fast and it builds up so tall, I want a board that can paddle really well, but not be too big so that when I get in the barrel, it's not sketchy. Right, right. Because a lot of the times, like, we had a batch of boards that I thought was were gonna be good for pipe because I was getting in early and I was like, you know, it was easy for me to get my waves. Right. But a lot of times when I would get deep in the barrel, I felt like it was really hard for me to control mm -hmm. the board. The board's just like going and I'm just holding on pretty much because <laughs> yeah. There's so much volume. So this year we kind of toned it down. And it feels like it's way easier to surf in the barrel. So just maneuverability. So maneuverability in the barrel just felt so much better and it fit. It wasn't sketchy. I had so much more control. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, hanging out with Britt Merrick and Zeke Lau as we talk surfboard and fins. I'm learning a bunch, having fun, and I wanted to include you guys in our conversation. Look, if you like the show, subscribe. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. And give us a thumbs up if you like our content. Special shout out thanks to the folks at CI and Zeke Lau for sending in the footage so we can make this episode happen. Until next time, we'll see you in the water. Bye-bye.